Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Hi. Uh, welcome to the Battle for OSINT. Are you Team GUI? Are you Team Command Line? I am Team GUI. I'm Tracy Mayleaf, also known as InfoSec Sherpa. My co-presenter in crime here is Joe Gray. He is Team Command Line, and he is C3P Joe. Oh, thank you. Um, so we want to make this fun, but uh, real quick, we just wanted to kind of explain the purpose of this talk. We are not saying that one is necessarily bad or better than the other, one way of doing things. Um, we want to show you different ways to retrieve OSINT. So my background is that I am a, oops, here we go. Uh, I have a library background, so I know how to find stuff. Joe has a tech background. He knows to find how to find things another way. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you different ways to find things, and here's our our credentials uh, with each of our, our spirit animals. His is Tigger, mine's a, a cheetah, apparently. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Ed Rojas. Yeah, <laughs> so um, this is gonna be good. So uh, just real quick, a little give you an overview. So we do not have a ton of time. I alone could spend an hour talking about GUI ways to retrieve stuff. He could spend an hour doing stuff. So just going clockwise, we're gonna do a little brief intro, which we are in the middle of now. Um, I'm going to talk first about GUI stuff. He's going to talk about command line. Joe's going to uh, continue the reins, holding the reins, and do a live demo. And then we're going to have a Q&A, but we also are going to have a giveaway. But you have to be present to win, so you have to stay put and watch our whole conversation. So we have some OSINT books. And I came up with what I thought was a very clever way to give away the books. That remains to be seen. We'll figure it out. But um, I was going to tell people, move up. This isn't a Gallagher show. If you don't know that reference, ask an old person or look it up. Um, <laughs> but to um, kind of help sweeten things up a little bit, since you're all a bunch of smarties, we have some smarties. <laughs> and we'll see how good my throwing arm is. And I'm also going to periodically throw candy out, because I don't want to see the tops of your head looking down at your phone. We're showing you some cool stuff, but please wait until we're done talking about it, because we worked really hard on this. So. Uh, so, you know, heads up for candy, okay? All right, cool. So, and since Joe and I are both talkers, we are meticulously timing our talks so that we don't run into each other's stuff. We so, don't want to make this an hour and 45 minute long advanced persistent security podcast. Yeah, exactly. We are. And that's also the, the graphic in the middle is, oh, so quick, quick uh, comment. So Joe and I met for the first time yesterday. <laughs> we worked on this distance. We met each other over Twitter. We work on his podcast together, Advanced Persistent Security Podcast. And we worked on this all remotely. So if you are looking to present at a con, don't just wait to you know meet someone in person. It is 2017. If you meet, <laughs> meet someone on the interwebs, you can work with them and do a, a project. So we're pretty excited about it, and we hope Absolutely. you like it too. All right. Whoops, there we go, okay. Okay, so let's start with Twitter. So a couple things you may not know. You, who knew that you had to, who knew that you did not have to be logged into Twitter to search it? Anybody knew that? Okay, cool. Smarties, we've got some Smarties here. Awesome. Um, so that's important to know. So there they have this advanced search screen. They like to hide it, but it's there. That's the URL for it. And there's some cool ways of doing things. So why do you want to do this? Well, Twitter has something crazy like 300 million posts daily or monthly or something like that. So they have a lot of content. That's a lot of low-hanging fruit to go after if you're trying to find information. So, you know, go to social media. People are posting stuff all the time. So what I'm going to show you is, um, you know, you don't just throw spaghetti at the wall and expect something to stick. Use the tools that these search engines gave you. Now keep in mind, they were not built as search engines, so things are wonky. So here's some examples of how you can pull information out. Dude, if you leave, you're not eligible for the book drawing. All right. <laughs> All right, so let's start with an easy advanced Twitter search. If you use the phrase here, to colon Walmart, that means all tweets sent to Walmart with the keyword defective, and you tell it, I only want it to filter out tweets with images. So you get a whole string of people who took pictures of defective things at Walmart. Why is this interesting? Well, I worked at law firms for 10 years. Don't you think that would be interesting from a product's liability standpoint? <laughs> that was low-hanging fruit to pull out if you're trying to find out if a customer or you know, a client had some issues with their product. 
Go to social media. Are people complaining about it? Chances are you're going to see a, a, a chair that didn't fold correctly. I love this one. The chair didn't fold up. They called it defective, so they just left it in the beach parking lot. Alternatively, with this, if you're ever doing a pretexting engagement and you need a name to pose as, this is where you're going to get your names. So if you're going to be the good guy, they're singing the praises. If you're, if you're going to be the bad guy, you can, you can flame. And, and that'll be just within your pretext. So. And I wanted to highlight the, uh, the top and the latest in case you weren't aware. Uh, if you want to search things that had the most retweets, the most likes, the most things that were interacted with or sponsored tweets, they'll show up as top. If you want straight up chronological, you click latest. It'll always default to top, so make sure you're aware of that. So now let's get into, ooh, fancy. This is a real search that worked. I tested it as of this morning. I had to do some research, again, for, uh, for a law firm. And this is, well, I knew that there was a gas explosion in Manhattan. Um, it was around those dates, around March 20, you know, end of March time-ish. So these are all search tools that you use in Twitter. This is all done in the bubble. I did this in the, in the bubble. Um, so they have things. You can do near. Now this is, uh, dependent upon people having their geotagging on, on their phones. Now, I know smart people like us don't have that enabled, but a lot of people don't, so take advantage of that. And you can even do a mile radius. Um, and then the since and the before, or since and until are like before and after. So I'm searching tweets from that time period. And this is a whole string of photos, which to an insurance company or a law firm, this is gold, because the next step would be, then some paralegal would reach out to those people and maybe get a statement, or a journalist might, you know, get a statement from someone, may I use your tweet, rather than, you know, being able to find things on site. So this is how you can really narrow things down. All right, next question. How, show of hands, how many people have heard of Twitter lists? Okay, excellent, I'll get in here. Why don't you start throwing up candy, make yourself useful. Okay. <laughs> All right, excellent. Keep those hands up if you actually use them. All right. If you, somebody gets, we have nerds, so we have nerds and smarties. So maybe, don't throw the, the nerds are kind of heavy, be careful. But if somebody wants their nerds, come up and get nerds. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> come, and get them, nerds. come get it, nerds. Come on. Okay, so, okay, so why are our lists important? Okay, all right, candy's over now, I'm talking again. Okay. <laughs> Um, so why are Twitter lists important? So true story, I was hired by a company to do competitive intelligence, and the company said, we want you to find out who our biggest uh, rivals' customers are, but we don't want you to spend any money. Because, of course, that's how you do research. But anyway, because I am you know, enterprising and clever and all that good stuff, because I am the Sherpa, um, I started poking around the company's social media. And I noticed that somebody was dumb enough to have Twitter lists called clients, potential clients, and invitation to you know party invites, things like that. They spelled it all out for me. So I couldn't believe my good luck. So quickly did some screen caps. I did save the URLs, but I thought, surely somebody's gonna wise up at some point and make these private so that I can't see them. But I had proof of both of them. It was gold. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe someone was that stupid. So side note. Make sure your Twitter lists are private if you don't, or don't call them something so obvious like clients or customers. So that's a good way to do OSINT is by looking at the social media list. Now how you get to list is you go to, that's my profile, and you can go, you know, you click down on your photo and you see lists. Um, there's two different kinds, and ones that you're subscribed to and ones that you're a member of. And you can also create your own new list. I have that circled in red there. Now, I thought I discovered a loophole last month, but I checked it again last week, and it didn't work anymore. But I'll just tell you what I thought I found. I was all excited. I thought I found a way to bypass the privacy public thing, because if you are on a public list, you get notified that someone added you to a list. Whenever I tweet about data visualization, I get this, you've been added to data viz experts. I'm like, why? Why does one article make me an expert? But um, I initially set up a list, made them private, added people, and then made it public. Initially, at the end of March, it never sent any generation notices. And I'm like, yes, I found a loophole. And then somebody must have fixed it because when I did that again a month later and, and changed it, all of a sudden all these notifications popped up. And they were all my own accounts, so I wasn't like sending it to people who didn't know I, I added them. But um, 
the reason why I'm telling you that story is Twitter changes all the time. They're always changing functionality, so don't expect that something that worked six months ago is going to work again. And especially lists, be very careful that you make lists private if you don't want people to see them, because otherwise people will be notified. So now you're probably thinking, okay, this is great, Tracy, but what if I want to find a list to follow? Okay, so because Twitter loves to mess with us, they disabled the feature how you could search for lists in their own Twitter client, so that's awesome, right? So you have to go to the Googles. So this is, these are ways how you find lists. You tell it, you know, that you want the site Twitter. You want the, in the URL, you want the word lists. And then you want, you know, members, if you're looking members of a certain list. And I showed you three different options. Then you want your qualifier. So what's, do you want it to have cyber in it? You can use with or without quotes. You can use a hashtag. That will bring up lists that have that word or that hashtag or something in it describing it. That's how you can find a list of cyber people to follow or things like that. Or if you want to follow people, you know, with DEF CON, that's how you find it. So you have to go to Google to find Twitter lists. So that's pretty interesting. I think so anyway. So, okay. So who here is not on Facebook? Not. Give them people some candy. Give them some candy. Not on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> okay. So good job for you. I wish I had your, your strength. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so this is a two-parter slide here. All right. Last one. Okay. Pay attention. We have lots of candy. Just come up and see us afterwards. Okay. Um, uh, so. Yes. Yeah, don't worry about the van without windows. It's just fine. Okay. It's the rental. This is a two-part slide. One, I found this article in Business Insider's Tech Insider piece, and this is when I want to talk to you about you know, thinking creatively and thinking outside the box as far as resources. You know, you might follow a lot of, of tech, you know, and security things, and that's great, but if you're, you know, trying to do OSINT stuff, you know, think about some of these other resources. Think about all the business pages. If you want to be really on top of what changes there are in social media, follow the accounts that these, their engineering and their, um, their blogs, and Twitter has all kinds of like blog and help and engineering and API. Twitter accounts specifically, where do you think all the news outlets get their information? They follow all those accounts. So that's the one part. The second part is, um, I blacked out stuff to protect the innocent and the unwilling to participate in this, pre this presentation. Um, you can go into your Facebook account, type in photos liked by and a name, I do not follow this person on Facebook, but yet I can still see photos that they liked because the photos that they liked had the had a public setting. So it doesn't matter if your individual setting is private. If you like a photo that's public, it shows up in this search string. And I just did this like this week, so this still works until Facebook figures out a way. We'll take questions at the end. Um, okay, so hey, we all know about backdoors and things and stuff, blah, blah, blah. So there's this site called academia.edu. Um, if you go to it, it has all these ways to log in. Log in here, log in here, log in here. It's so faint, they make it so hard to see. Um, there's a row at the bottom that has different subject areas, like physics and things like that. If you click on one of those, you get into the site without having to log in. So be enterprising. If you're trying to find something, um, there might be a way to get into it. Now again, remember I came from the law firm environment, so I would not pull, these are full of like academic papers and things like that, um, that people post themselves. But what I would do for a site like this is I would get the citation and then go pull it from a reputable source because I would have to make sure that things were admissible in court if it got to that. So I would just poke around on this site, find citations, take them to the actual journal that they originally appeared in and pulled it from there. Um, so that's why there's a couple things here. just want to show that there's you know, ways to get into things that look like you have to require a sign in if you want to be under the radar. But also just use it to take information elsewhere and get it from a more reputable source. I couldn't use things like Scribd and all that stuff. I had to get the actual like from the source stuff. All right, what's the scoop? I love this site. So scoop, S-Q-O-O-P. Uh, it used to be free. I think they want to charge me 100 bucks now, and that's still pretty cheap. But this site is good for sort of social engineering sort of things. Do you want to pretend that you're from the law firm that a company hired to do intellectual property? Do you want to pretend that you're from the auditor that does the company's uh, you know, books and things like that? This site, Scoop, will all at once search um, SEC fil filings, patents, and uh, federal law cases, all in one fell swoop. 
So my example here, it's really hard to see because it was a small page, but I just typed in cybersecurity and I was able to see you know, SEC uh, documents, you know, financial documents, patents, lawsuits. It's a good way if you're trying to get background information on a company or, like I said, if you want to verify, like if you're going to try to pretend to be an auditor and you say you're from Deloitte and that company doesn't use Deloitte, you're caught. <laughs> so don't just rely on doing a random Google search that you're going to get that information. Go to the actual SEC filings because that's legit, right? SEC is legit. Hashtag SEC is legit. And if they falsify it, well... So the last site that I want to go over is Storify. Show of hands, who knows Storify? Okay, throw some candy at those at those people. Um, <laughs> so there, since there were so few, I'm going to put some nerds down the aisle for it. Okay, so Storify. So okay, actually, well, this is a good example. I did. So our lovely DA here did a great. Um, Twitter chat story one time giving, he loves to dispense uh, information and advice and things like that. And he does a series of tweets where he tells a story. And the first, one of the first times I saw that you did it, I was like, oh, send him a DM. I'm like, do you mind if I Storify your talk? So what I did, and he gave me, uh, he gave me permission. So I went into Storify and I pulled off his tweets and I put them in a pretty row like that and added some graphics and some explanation and sent the link out there so that when you could read it, it's not just a clever name, you read it like a story because all of them are stacked on one top of each other. You manually pull them in there. So it's a great way to capture storytelling like that and do things. But it also is a good search engine. So I tried to, it's, I don't know, to me that looks really small, hopefully you can see that. So you can search a variety of social media uh, platforms on Storify and it'll pull information in. What I like about Storify is you can, uh, so I, I told it that I wanted to search for tweets that had the word malware in it but in Baltimore. So then this map popped up and it was like, where in Baltimore would you like me to search? A one mile radius or a 25 mile radius? And it gives you some other options as well, but you can do this for Instagram and a whole Flickr and all kinds of other sites and Twitter. So um, not only can you just pull that information, but then you can also just make it look pretty because all you have to do is drop and drag and put it over there. So again, if you're dealing with someone who may be, you know, a C-suite or something who isn't very savvy, don't send them, you know, a CSV dump, you know, or don't waste your time trying to make a dump look pretty. <laughs> you know, maybe you can go in here and show some examples of like, hey, I looked up our, co our competition or our company and I put them all in here for you. So it's a really nice way to bring things together. So um, before we move on to Joe's stuff, I just kind of wanted to say in summary, so, you know, Get to know what resources are out there. Um, there's probably a hundred different social media platforms that you don't know for every one that you know. Um, if you are doing research in a specific country, chances are that country may have its own homegrown social media platform. Um, you know, China has them, Brazil has them. You know, you might need, if you're not finding what you need, you may need to expand where you're looking. I always make the analogy of, you know, think of research like a funnel. You know, funnels are not just for beer bombs anymore. It's, you know, you need to really cast a wide net and then narrow things down. I think I see a lot of people who like to go into Google and just throw a whole string of search words and expect things to come up. Yeah, you might get some hits, but you know, narrow it down, go incrementally. Um, another, just, I'm gonna close on this story about how to use your search time wisely. So at my first law firm job, came in first thing in the morning and this associate was like, I was up from midnight to 3 a.m. searching for the labor code of the Cayman Islands. Can you help me? And I was like, oh, you poor thing. Okay, so I had it in two seconds because I knew to go to Google and do site search gov.ky because I did, I did this kind of research all the time. I knew that gov.ky was the Cayman Islands government site. I knew that it was probably a buried PDF, so I specifically told it to search PDFs. And I knew that they used the Queen's English, so I used the keyword as labor with a U. Popped up right away. But I didn't want to make him feel that bad, because, you know, he spent all that money going to law school and everything. So I was like, so I got my coffee, checked my email, did a couple of stuff, let him hang for a little bit. And then I sent it to him, and I was a genius and blah, blah, blah. Never spend more than 15 minutes searching for something. You know, that that concept gets drilled into your head better if you ever worked at a job where you have to bill time. As a librarian at a law firm, I used to have to bill every six minutes. I used to have to keep track of my time every six 
minutes. So I have a very keen sense of how much time I'm spending on stuff because time is money. But your, your time is money too, you know. That's keeping you away from playing a game or playing with your kids or going out, you know, with a girlfriend or a spouse or boyfriend or whomever. So, you know, if you are, if you spend 15 minutes and you still can't find something, stop. Take a break. Evaluate what you're looking at. Ask for help. Ask on Twitter or ask for other resources. Go to your library. You know, libraries have lots of databases that you can have access to. You know, if you pay city taxes, you know, you probably can use the Baltimore Public Library or your local library. You know, be, be thoughtful with your searches. You know, be mindful of that. So that's what I just want to tell you. Just save you a lot of aggravation. Step back, take a breath, and it will all come together. And that is my GUI presentation. Thank you. So that was uh, pretty good, right? Everybody learned a lot from it. I'll admit it's, it's pretty hard to follow. So um, let's go ahead and uh, get this party started uh, with uh, Team Command Line. So uh, we're going to start this out with, uh, I'll take what are APIs for 500, Alex? So we need to understand with the command line, we're actually interacting with the same resources that Tracy interacts with. We're just doing it in a different way. So with that, we're typically doing it with an API, which is an application programming interface, if you don't know. A lot of times you might use an API to talk to a library of some sort. Not her kind of library, like a code library. Um, there are APIs for operating systems. Um, many times it's used to share information, or in this context, gather information and then, you know, sometimes it'll be like, hey, we have this service, we distribute video for this. If you want to use it on your website, here's how you get an API key and you can use our code. That's what it's ultimately for. But in the OSINT sense, um, why would you want to use the command line over the GUI? Uh, anybody have any ideas? Automation, Automation yep. Data formatting. Data formatting, faster. Yes. To a degree, yes. It's behind you. So all these things are true. You can actually gather the data. It's in a flat file. You're not having to compile it um, out of the web browsers and all of that stuff. Um, you can put your regular expressions against it and move on to the next thing. Use that to refine it and just keep moving. Uh, there is a certain level of uh, maintaining anonymity from it. Um, especially if you're using an API key that's not really tied to an account that's active. Um, another thing that you have to worry about when you're using the GUI, like when you're scoping somebody out on Facebook, for example, when you start scoping them out, you may actually show up in people they may know. You don't want that, right? If, you, if, you're, if you're being a creeper, you don't want them to know you're being a creeper. <laughs> um, so with, with an account that I use, actually, I get all kinds of recommendations. It's like, no, that engagement's over. I'm not working with that company anymore. Um, alternatively, if you have in that same email address that it's tied to, if you have their email address in it, it'll recommend you there as well. So keep that in mind. Um, but the big thing that I always want to think of whenever I'm thinking about you know, OSINT, this right here basically sums it up. Roses are red, violets are blue, you can't see me, but I can see you. And that's ultimately what you want out of OSINT. So uh, with this, I'm going to hit you with some memes, and then I'm going to kick kind of into the demo mode, because that's where most of my talk lies. It's kind of hard to talk about a command line a lot, right? Um, so we're trying to fly underneath the radar. And, and Buzz Lightyear, he, he's telling us there, there, there's, there's radar traps everywhere. So if we're going to be under the radar, we have to be cognizant of the radar. So. In that sense, uh, let me shift gears for a moment, and I'm going to show you some some uh, little uh, surprises that I've came up with. So, uh, wrong one. Let me see if I can zoom it in. Let me move it over. You don't have these problems on GUI, I'm just gonna keep saying that. Yeah, yeah. So Do you want a GUI center of something or do you want a command line center of something? Oh no, no, I went full screen. Exactly. Oh no. I've turned the sound on now. I'll just start counting off candy. 
Yeah, hand out some candy. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Um, problem behind podium, not in keyboard. So, uh, it always is. Um, let's see here. What am I looking for here? Appearance. Ah, here we go. Just got to change the font. Give me just a moment here. Aha. How's that? Absolutely. So within this directory, basically, I've got a, I've got a couple of scripts of value here. Um, we're going to focus on charm.py. And uh, I've also put it up on GitHub if you want to steal it. Uh, I've sanitized some stuff out of it. Um, so in that regard, here it is on GitHub. We'll just kind of break through it a little bit here. Um, that is the legit U URL for it if you want it. But in this charm.py script, basically, what I've done is I've created a separate file that contained my Twitter API keys because I'm in no way, shape, or form going to put that up here for someone to take a picture of. Um, but anyway, within, within the script, what it's actually doing, um, this right here is just setting up the encoding so that I can have a little fun with it later. This is the definition for your download tweets um, URL, and we're looking for the screen name, the number of tweets, and we're excluding replies. And, and I'll show you the fields that actually go with that here in just a moment. Uh, but in this sense, basically, we're looking for the response, and it's from uh, requests, which is another Python library that actually comes into this. Um, of course, using JSON, it's going to return the tweets, and then we're actually going to uh, use this to format it and then print it low, uh, down below. So within the actual code uh, here, you can see that I've loaded besides charm, we're going to get 150 tweets, and under exclude replies, we are excluding replies. So this is true. So uh, moving back to uh, good old putty, let's just uh, go ahead and... Um, And we'll uh, just call that charm dot, shall we? So, okay. So look, it's every single, well, it's not every single, it's the last 150 tweets that has crossed uh, besides Charm's Twitter feed. So how do we make meaningful use of this? Well, I'm glad you asked. So, I've got another script that I put in here that is a parsing script. It runs a regular expression. I'll show it to you in a moment. Um, but uh, we'll just call that parse.tech. And then we'll just, uh, we'll just uh, tap, shall we? Okay, so now we've got this actually set up by date, time, uh, a little bit of context here, who did it, all of that fun stuff, same thing all around. And with that, uh, within this as well, I've actually got a second regular expression, which I should probably go ahead and show you. Uh, the first one actually just takes the entire uh, tweet, while the second one actually just determines who it's communicating with, who else is mentioned in that. And uh, Let me see here. Thank you. There we go. Let me control minus a little bit here. So I'm not mirroring the screens over here, so bear with me a moment. So going back here, um, so in parse.py, it's very simple. Um, with it, it just you just open the charm.txt file, and here's the regular expression that's going to get your date, your time, your message, and all that. And then for context, there's the second regular expression. It's going to print both of them. And yes, sir. Well, in, in this case, I purposely went a little bit more challenging as opposed to using one of the libraries that actually tie Python directly into the API. And with this one, I wanted to break it up into two different scripts because one of them was being a little bit more temperamental than the other. Um, because I'm by no means a Python developer, I'm not heavy in Python at all, so this was actually kind of a stretch uh, to get this portion down. 
Uh, at a later time, if I were actually going to try to build something out of it, I would actually put the regular expression within the single script and actually have it interactive where you could make decisions, what context do you want to see, so forth and so on. But for the sake of simplicity, that's why I put it into two scripts for this. Uh, but with it, you know, it's just running those regular expressions and it's running a find all across it and that's what's dumping the data out. From the OSINT point of view, the reason that that's actually somewhat valuable is because if you're trying to get to someone, if you're, if you're doing a paid engagement and you're actually trying to get to someone, per se, you're going to need to know who their contacts are because you might need to exploit them to get there. You may need to pose, uh, if, if you were coming for me, you might need to pose as Tracy and say, hey, Joe, there's a talk, uh, there, there's a CFP opening up, are you interested? Well, that'll probably get my ear. So in, in that sense, you know, knowing who people communicate with, that allows you to enumerate their personal network and be get better information about them for more effective uh, intelligence, be it uh, for social engineering or anything else you're trying to do. Um, so within that scope, it's kind of it with the script portion there, but um, have no fear. I've got a data split here. And um, Datasploit is a, an open source tool written in Python and basically it just aims to scrape data. You need to get some API keys. It ties in very well. Well, it doesn't communicate with uh, Recon NG, but they are very similar in nature. And with them, basically the, the keys to the kingdom uh, happen to lie within what you have API keys for. So in this sense, um, this one's more for going after like emails and domains where um, Recon NG has those same capabilities, but you can actually go for um, a little bit more like things like out of have I been pwned and, and profiles elsewhere uh, in geolocation information if you have the correct API keys. Uh, so with this one, we're just going to do the username OSINT one. If I can spell today. And let's do... Okay, so uh doesn't look like it's found much. Oh, there it is. Oh, they've got a Pinterest. So there we go. So, and you can't really hate on Pinterest. I did for the longest, and then I found out if you post like somewhat relevant memes on it, it'll, it'll attract people to your website. So, so that's probably why. No hate there. But that's the kind of, you know, this is the kind of information that you could definitely make meaningful use of in, in your OSINT, you know, do you, is this, because people typically use the same username. Like Tony, he's probably DA underscore 667 everywhere. We're close to it. You want to put it to the test here? Go ahead, sir. We have a tribute. What do we got here? Oh, you've got a Pinterest too. <laughs> you do. What's that? What's your username? Is that correct? Oh, okay. Got it? <laughs> so you're on DeviantArt. <laughs> there you go. So, you know, from this, this actually allows you, um, if you want to apply this to like social engineering, this actually, uh, and, and I'll talk about this more in the workshop tomorrow, but you know, once you get an email address or a username, this allows you to start building a profile about someone. And oftentimes when you're dealing with OSINT, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to build the profile so that you can use something against them uh, in a perfect spear phishing engagement. And understanding that there's no such thing as perfect, but a near uh, perfect uh, style engagement. Um, and then of course, we, uh, we have tools like uh, Recon NG, which I don't think we'll go too heavily into Recon NG, um, but it's something worth being cognizant of because it is pretty much from the command line. I understand the font sucks, so I'm just going to go with um, showing the modules. So basically, here's 
here's what you have in terms of capability. Uh, discovery. Interesting files is always one of my favorites when I'm running OSINT against a company. Why? Because, well, you never know. You might find something out on the public internet that's not supposed to be there. Um, and before I go further with this, there's a module in Recon NG that I found to be very valuable as well, and that is their WikiLeaks module. You can actually search to see if the company you are after is on WikiLeaks. So, um, and then within here, you have other capabilities as well. Um, you can import as a list or a CSV. You can also uh, do an export CSV HTML. But basically here you can see that you've got like companies and the contacts. Uh, it's looking for GitHub, who is, contacts, uh, credentials. There's have I been pwned. Um, Ashes.org, Metacrawler, that's a really good one if you're looking for metadata. Um, like academia.edu that she mentioned, I would use it a completely different way. I would go in and try to scrape meta metadata out of people's files so that I could gain information about them. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, I highly recommend running OSINT on yourself because, you know, in some cases you can control what's out there, in other cases you can't. And it's important to know when you can and when you can't. And, you know, something that Michael Basil talks about a lot is the disinformation campaigns, which I've not really achieved that level of um, OSINT quirkiness, I guess would be the proper term, yet. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm definitely stocking up on the aluminum foil to start uh, going down that rabbit hole at some point. So continuing down, you know, there's Pwnless, which it doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, you can enumerate other domains. This is very useful for like the brute suffix because I just did a phishing engagement this last week against an organization. It was a little bit too accurate and it got shut down in about four hours, but not before I had almost 20 email addresses and password combinations um, out of a very small organization. Um, they could have actually caught me before I even started if they ran this because they would have found where they have .com for their email domain, I used .us. So, and I'm a huge fan of .life and .club because they're 99 or 88 cents and $1.88 on Namecheap. Huge fan of those. But, you know, you can just keep going and going through Recon NG. There's, I mean, we, we could talk about this for hours on end. It's, it's very robust. There's a lot of good stuff with it. And it is from the command line. You do have to have API keys. But it also produces a really nice report if you want to hand it over to management uh, at the end of everything so they can understand where their organization lies. So it's a really good tool for that. Um, but now I'm actually going to do something out of the ordinary. And in doing so, whenever I find my cursor, I thought I just saw it. There it is. So within this, I'm actually going to, for a moment, defect from Team CLI to Team GUI. One of us. One of us. Has anybody seen this before? This is the Facebook Live map. I'm not a candy girl. I come. I come. I, I, I commonly refer to this as the OSINT Pew Pew map. <laughs> what you see here, these little bubbles you're seeing, these are everybody that's on Facebook Live right now, publicly. And I think if you look at my other tabs, you might see the direction I'm going to go with this. So let's look. Let's see, what do we have here? Uh, it's only got three people watching. We, you, you need somebody that's got a lot, like quite a few watching. Let's see what's going on right here. Come on. Oh, I need to zoom in some more, I guess. So with it being a bigger dot, there's a good chance that it's got more, uh... oh yeah, 338, excellent. So honestly, I don't even care what they're talking about. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. So here we have it here. What you need to know is right here is the video ID. What could possibly go wrong? Anybody familiar with this place? If you're ready for your skin to crawl, uh, 
If there's a time that's going to do it, it's going to be right now. Because if you see what the next tab is, I think you know exactly where it's going. Oh, what do we have here? Lat. Are they doing like lat raises in the gym? Are they doing like the long jump in the Olympics? No, I, actually, I think this is latitude and longitude. So uh, let's just uh, have a look around over here on Google Maps, shall we? Nothing ever goes wrong, right? Pew, pew. Oh. What, what, where are they? What's, what's going on here? Come on, Google. Oh. It's in Salem. It's outside of Philly. I'm there from you Philly, go. so I know this is my. I don't live near there, but I recognize Parks Casino. Yeah. So, like with this one, I actually ran it once. Oh, there's somebody in Baltimore. Let's see. Let's see who it is. What they're up to, shall we? Um, with this. Um, <laughs> You know, honestly, true applicability for this before, like, while the Facebook killer stuff was going on, I was like, I really don't want this dude to kill anybody, but if he would go live publicly one time, I could get him with this. Anybody could get him with this. But, you know, it's neither here nor there. Come on, man. So, with this, just know, you know, when, when I first came across this, um, we were, I was in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and we actually looked at local videos, and at the University of Tennessee Chattanooga dorms, across the street from each other, you had one lady absolutely running Trump into the mud, and the other was doing a makeup tutorial. It's like, okay. But doesn't they get them to mesh into teams of teams? Of oh, absolutely. If they're, you know, broadcasting from their bedroom, like, hey, we're telling the world where we live. Right, because, <laughs> because you can actually get environmental data. You can determine, hey, are there other people walking around in here? Or do they look like they're in the bedroom? Or what, what kind of ambient noises exist? What's going on with this, right? I've never tried it with the VPN. I want to try it, but I'm also ultra private with Facebook. Um, so I've not, but I would think that there's a good possibility that using a VPN would actually um, circumvent that. And if I really wanted to be like really creepy, I would actually take a screenshot from Google Maps, like Street View, and actually post it as a comment, but I've not achieved that level of creepy yet. <laughs> one day, Joe, one day. <laughs> right. And, and that could be the case. If you have location services enabled, then there's that opportunity. Um, alternatively, you know, I have a VPN on my phone as well. So I dump out another location. So if I, since I don't use location services, it may try to triangulate off that IP address as well. So that's definitely something worth putting uh, putting to practice. Sure. Well, I, I know one VPN service dumps out in Seattle and has stuff in New York as well. One service. Um, ironically enough, that's about all that's going on in that area right now. But let's see what she's up to. Is this a makeup tutorial? Let me go ahead and... Uh, so we take the, uh, the ID here. And I, I almost guarantee you this is going to be residential. Let's go ahead and reload this just since we don't know how long she's been on, right? Okay. Oh, oh here we go again. If this was the 80s, I'd be saying something about here or I go again on my own. But anyway...
That is. That is a. I, I'll show you as soon as. So here we go again. Oh, it is residential. So uh, let's just have a look at the end of the cul-de-sac. And this is the time that you break out the Spider-Man uh, screenshot neat meme and just go, neat, <laughs> screen shoot it. So when I first did this, actually, there was a, a political pundit. They were, they were all up on their soapbox. And uh, I was like, OK, yeah, I'll run this. And uh, I ran it. And they were at the back of their cul-de-sac house, or I'm sorry, cul-de-sac at their home in Greenville, South Carolina. They had red siding. They had a white Mercedes SUV and a black Tahoe. Exactly. So uh, from that scope, that's about all there is to uh, me making your skin crawl. Do you have um, Google equipment that we can just show you? Um, yeah. I want to do like that one too. It's Chrome, so just enter it in the browser. Okay. And then just keep an eye on the first one. Okay. Where? So you, you just got to watch the screen over there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't have repeating on. So just, you don't even have to type in Google because it's Chrome. Just go straight for what you're doing. I want me. Yes, Michael Basil. Um, after, after this is over. Um, Are we not on the interwebs? We were. All right, well, I'll just talk through it. Anyway, so you know if you go to news.google.com and it has the things across the top and one of them is tools, if you drop that down, you can uh, limit by date <clears throat> when you search for the news. Please don't try it again. Um, I do a lot of research for clients, and I need things that were, um, you know, date specific and things like that. So, hmm? gosh. Yeah, news.google.com. Sorry, we can't see it on here. It's kind of hard. There we go. There. Okay, so sorry, I can't see what I'm doing here, and we still have a giveaway to get to. So, um. yes. <laughs> and I'm, I'm hitting the wind up for it too. I, I, I'm going to choke that thing so hard. That the, 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 no, I don't think so. No, the Orioles okay, be, uh, so hit me up and be like, hey man, you want to come hang out in the bullpen and close us out in the eighth inning? Sorry, I can't see. It says recent. Okay, so yeah, you can do by month, by, you know, by thing. Okay, so I also do a lot of foreign language searching, but. So if I go to uh, Austria's Google, google.at, most countries have their own their own uh, Google home page. Uh, let's just do, cyber is a good word that crosses language barriers. So the setup's the same. So even though I don't know German, I can just kind of, I know that Monat is month. So the cool thing is no matter which Google news site you go to and which language, it's all pretty much set up the same way. So again, for me, I do uh, a monthly project where I look up um, 15 different countries and I do subject searches. So I look at a handful of languages. And no, I don't know them all, but I get to learn them. I get to learn where things are in Google, in, in Google Austria, for example. And it's all pretty much the same. So it's kind of cool if, again, if you're not finding, because I found with Twitter, if you try to search foreign languages in Twitter, in the English, um, uh, web page you near know, the site. If you go to like Twitter France, you'll get some different and even sometimes better results. So if you're not finding what you need and you know that it's uh, you know in another language or originating in another country, go to that country's sites. So um, that's one good thing to do. Okay, so um, why don't we do the giveaway and then we'll have questions real quick. So I want to make sure we get to the giveaway. So the little moral of the story is, so hopefully you've learned some stuff. Pl round of applause, you guys learn anything? Yes, yeah. so okay, good, good. So obviously, the, you know, there's a part of OSINT where you just need to be good, right? You need to know stuff, you need to be good. But there's all parts of OSINT where sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. So we brought this, this type of giveaway together is, um, we have two decks of cards here. I have Joker representing zero up through nine, and we're going to draw two different cards. If the last two digits of your cell phone match, you get one of these books. And we're just going to ask you to show us your phone number. We're not going to say it to anyone or anything. 
But that was the least intrusive way and the easiest way we could think to do this. Speak for yourself. I'm going to call it out. <laughs> so I'm shuffling these. And Joe, if you want to hold the books up and if we have ties or whatever, we'll figure it out. But let's just do this. So Oops, sorry, here we have the seminal social engineering by Christopher Hadnagy. And here we have mining the social web. So the whole API stuff right here. That's where, it's, where you're going to find it. All right. So. so because I don't want to disqualify anyone, if Joe wants to put those down, I'll have him choose the card. I've shuffled these. All right. So just pick, pick a card. No sleight of hand or anything. Just hold on to it first. Hold on to it. Don't say it yet. Oh, man, that's my phone number. Don't say it yet. <laughs> All right. Pick another card. Pick another card. Any card. All right. If your cell phone number ends in 81 or 18, we have an ace and an eight. Come on up. Show us your phone. Come on up. Show us your phone. That's, that's it. We have two people. Woohoo! That's perfect. All right. So, Phyllis, uh, we got we got like a few situational slides to uh, work through as well. So, I don't always Facebook stalk people, but when I do, you're welcome. Um, so, yes, yes, um, I didn't put it up here, but it's github.com slash Josephus. J-O-C-E-P-H-U-S. That's like my only legit repo out there right now. Everything else is just clones. Um, yeah, so just to reiterate, plugging uh, uh, the podcast, uh, she's on PVC Sec regularly. She's periodically on Advanced Persistent <laughs> Security. Um, Sword and Shield uh, did the giveaway. Uh, my employer, of yeah, course. Thank you to Sword and Shield for giving us the books to give away. So, thanks for having us. Thanks for being a captive audience. If you're interested in working for Sword and Shield, we're actually hiring. Uh, if you think you're qualified or you just want to find out more about it, talk to me after we're done. I'll tell you kind of what we're looking for because it's kind of vague. Um, <laughs> HR told me what they were looking for, and it's like, Okay, sure. I, I, let me try to get the signal to noise uh, with that. Um, ideally, they're looking for somebody in Knoxville, Tennessee, or willing to relocate there. But if you're qualified enough, they'll they'll accept remote. And if you're looking to add a Sherpa to your workforce, I am looking for a job. Yes. So. Sherpa for hire. Yes. So uh, she is at Infosec Sherpa, and I am at C underscore three P Joe. All right, we hope you guys had a great time. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Sir, we did it.